The world is watching Tennessee. The world is watching Tennessee. Because what is happening here today is a farce of democracy. What is happening here today is a situation in which the jury has already publicly announced the verdict. Just yesterday, the House Speaker took to national news to condemn us and call for our expulsion before any evidence was presented, before any trial happened. And so what we see today is just a spectacle. What we see today is a lynch mob assembled to not lynch me, but our democratic process. But it will not stand because no lie can live forever. Colleagues, the video you showed a few moments ago, I want to say thank you. Because it showed for the world the ridiculousness of the claims that what we were doing merit the ultimate punishment of expulsion. Mr. Speaker, I represent 78,000 people. And when I came to the well that day, I was not standing for myself, but I was standing for my constituents. And the thousands of Tennesseans gathered in this capital demanding that this body act. But most particularly, I was standing for those young people those young people, many of whom come from my district, many of whom can't even vote yet, many of whom are disenfranchised, but all of whom are terrified by the continued trend of mass shootings plaguing our state and plaguing this nation. And so that is why I walked up to the well. I walked up to the well because you were pushing my people back. We brought a megaphone because you cut our people off and you cut their representatives off from the microphone time after time after time after time after time again. And there comes a time where people get sick and tired of being sick and tired. And so my colleagues, I say that what we did was act in our responsibility as legislators to serve and give voice to the grievances of people who have been silenced. Article 2, Section 27 says that any member of the House, any member of the Senate has a right to dissent from and protest against legislation that they know to be injurious to the people. The inaction of this body when it comes to the crisis of mass shootings is injurious to the people. The, the obedience of this body to special interest groups like the NRA is injurious to the people. The proliferation of guns that you promote in this state is injurious to the people. And so we had no other choice but to get our dissent marked for the journals. The next day, I was shocked to get messages, shocked to get copies of articles that House Speaker Cameron Sexton went on national television to lie to the world and say that what happened in this well was an insurrection. What happened out in those halls was an insurrection. I was shocked to have the Speaker of the House condemn mothers and children and grandmothers and parents and concerned citizens, clergy, lie on them and say that they were violent insurrectionists. And I think that he owes the people of Tennessee an apology. Because at no point was there violence. At no point did we encourage violence. In fact, what we were doing was calling for the end of gun violence. That is terrorizing our children day after day after day. And all we offer are moments of silence. It is in that spirit of speaking for my constituents, of being a representative of the people, that I approached this well on last Thursday. Breaking a house rule. 
but exercising moral obedience to my constitutional responsibility to be a voice for my people, to be a voice for the Tennesseans who you choose not to listen to because of those NRA checks that are so hefty in your campaign funds. There comes a time where people get sick and tired of being sick and tired. And so I came as a representative to this well. And so today, we are brought to here, where members are responding in the most extreme measure, not because of what we did, but because by breaking the quorum, we broke the glass of your false power for the world to see. We broke the glass of this chamber that someone called sacred. One of the members on the other side of the aisle was in tears and said, I've never seen such a breach of this sacred chamber. And I thought to myself, that representative has obviously never read history. Because it's in this chamber, if you walk around this Capitol, you'll see bullet holes when representatives got into conflict. You'll see duels take place on this House floor debating whether people like me should be treated like equal citizens under law. This is not a temple. This is a place where we're supposed to wrestle for our democracy and wrestle ideas and give voice to 78,000 constituents each of us represents. But for so long, this body, drunk with power, has modeled for the world what we know as nothing less than authoritarianism. And today is the climax of that behavior. That a week after a mass shooting plagued our community, the most direct action this legislative body takes, or should I say my colleagues on the other side of the aisle are taking, is to expel us for speaking about the issues of weapons of war on our streets. We called for you all to ban assault weapons, and you respond with an assault on democracy. That is why the nation is watching you today. And I say to my colleagues on the other side of the aisle that no matter what you vote, you have the votes, but you will not be victorious because there are generations of young people who see what is going on. There are young people that as you try and beat us down, they are rising up to take back this state from the extreme forces that have sought to take away the democratic process, the deliberative process. On last Thursday, when thousands gathered here tried to silence members from talking about the issue of gun violence because they were afraid that a conversation would remind people that there is complicity of this body and what happened at Covenant Elementary School. The truth be told, colleagues, Covenant Elementary School was not the first mass shooting in Nashville. I represent a part of Nashville. And one of my constituents who I don't know was in this chamber, Ms. Brooks, lost her son, Akila, in that mass shooting that occurred at the Waffle House in Antioch. And after that massacre, we demanded that this body act, but once again, you turned a blind eye and closed your ears and put your head in the sand and refused to listen to the voice of the people. Refused to listen to the voice of the people. And so once again, it was in that spirit of a representative for people who have time after time after time been silenced that I approached this well. And now this body who showed the video of what occurred, no violence, no death threats, but simply saying that until we have action, there will be no peace or safety in our communities. And how do my colleagues respond? They respond with the most extreme measure of expulsion, which has only taken place three times in this House. Only three times in over 200 years have there been members of the House of Representatives expelled. The first case was in 1866. Six members were expelled for refusing to confer citizenship on formerly enslaved persons. Then in 1980, one member was expelled for taking a $1,000 bribe to kill a bill on committee. In 2016, 
um, one member who many of you served with was expelled for 22 counts of sexual harassment. And now what you're doing with this prejudged expulsion resolution is saying that our actions were on par and equivalent with those egregious, some would say criminal activities that occurred.